a notification on your screen that we are being recorded and you can kick it off. Okay, great. Right. So this is the um, meeting, coaches meeting for AS4 Anatomy. And there have been some changes uh, this year. So um, my name is Felicia Scott. I basically um, coach, no, <laughs> supervise the event for the last probably 15 years. So uh, it, this way is new for a lot of us. So uh, I have a co-supervisor. Her name is Mary Kelly. And some of you may have, have met us in the past. Uh, for A is for anatomy. Um, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over some of the changes that will occur this year. So in the past, we have uh, tested heavily on models. And so now we're going to have to switch to pictures. And so what I've created for you guys as a uh, basically study packets for each uh, subject. So what will happen is that I will create a Google Drive and I will upload those uh, study packets for you, or I will give them to the, um, the, the event supervisors themselves and then they can email them to you. So we'll figure out a way of getting you those study packets. And so what will happen on the day of the competition is that the students have to be on time. Um, we'll begin the competition exactly at the time designated. We don't have the luxury of waiting on anyone. So need at least two number two pencils to be brought to the competition. We'll give them the Scantron. The type of Scantron we'll be using is actually a, let me show you, I'm gonna bring that up. It's the zip grade Scantron, so it looks like this. And you can actually print these. Didn't pause, okay, oh wait, sorry. Oops, sorry. <laughs> so uh, you can actually print these zip grade answer sheets from online and um, you just go to zipgrade.com and you'll be able to print them off. And so my suggestion is, is that you um, make sure that you practice with your uh, students. Now, the other thing you should be aware of is that students won't be allowed to touch anything. So in some of the study packets, I have actually incorporated pictures of the models. So either they will see the picture or they may see the model. But I'll try to only use models that you guys have pictures of. Just, um, are we good? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we. Okay, you can still see yes, my screen. I can hear you, and I'm sure everybody else can hear you. I think most okay. people are on Zoom other than one or two. Okay, users. so. Also, great. real quick, if you guys have a question, you can put it in the chat, or you can raise your hands, and uh, every here and there, I'll pass the questions on to Felicia. Okay. Yes. Thank great. You. So, um, make sure you practice using the zip. Uh, zip grade Scantron with your students. Also, the students should have any labels with them. So we will go through filling out the information for them or with them. So typically the way we've done it in the past is that we actually have the information on the answer sheet for them and they just have to uh, check it to make sure it's correct. Uh, and then on the back, they will be uh, answering their extra credit questions and those these questions spelling count. So for the extra credit or the tiebreaker questions, that's what we call them, tiebreaker questions, those will be on the back and then spelling would count. So students should practice using the Scantron type answer sheet, filling them in properly, making sure they're um, circling in the entire bubble, no X, no check, basically shading in the bubble. Students should try to erase as few answers as possible because sometimes the way the um, the way we actually record the answers, it may pick up erasers. So they should be very clear in what they are answering for that question. Students can't bring clipboards, scrap paper, backpacks, purses, or cell phones to the event. Now, if they have a cell phone, it has to be on off. It has to be. There will be a total of 22 stations. The students will be answering four multiple choice questions per station in one minute, except the tiebreakers, which are written down 
in the appropriate space on the back of the answer uh, on the answer Scantron type answer key. Students aren't allowed to talk during the competition. They should have some nonverbal communication cues worked out already before they get in the room. They can point, they just can't talk. And what I find is that students don't understand the difference between talking and whispering. Whispering is still talking. And so they cannot whisper either. And we give them all these um, directions at the beginning of the competition. It's a totally standing competition. They'll move throughout the room. So they'll go, I'll go one minute, that one minute is up, and then I'll say next station. So there's no um, sitting whatsoever unless there's a medical reason. And if there is a medical reason, we have to know in advance. Again, students are not allowed to touch any model or picture during the competition. The students have to remain in the same position for all competitors. So just because they finish answering a question, they just can't move to the next station. They have to wait until we tell them to move to the next station. And the stations are separated with tape as well. So they know what their defined area is that they're supposed to stand in. Students will not be allowed to return to any station. So if for some reason they can't think of an answer, it's best for them to guess. Parents and coaches are not allowed into the competition room. So you will not be allowed to come in to see the exam. The exam, after all the teams finish, it's immediately broken down. Please have students use the restroom before coming into the competition because they will not be allowed to leave the room until the end of the competition. And this, this is important for younger kids because sometimes they get nervous and then all of a sudden they have to use the restroom. So please make sure they have used the restroom before they come in because we just can't rent, let them randomly out of the competition room and roam the hall. So uh, the next, uh, document you see is actually what they'll be read on the day of the competition. So when they come in, I'll tell them to, uh, I'll give them, there'll be the Scantron type answer sheet at each. Alicia? Yes. Real quick, uh, I think you're, you are on a different screen share. I think you are on a uh, physical camera just seeing. Uh, oh, so you just went to my camera? I did not. I think I think you must have switched to the camera. Yes, I also have a document camera. So let me. Yeah, yeah. I think it went okay, to that. Okay, there it is. Can you see it now? Yes, we can. Yep. Okay, because yeah, my I have my document camera, so I can write their questions down and answer them if they yep. have questions. Yep. Okay, so this is the second document that they'll. These are the directions that the students themselves will be read the day of the competition. So they'll come into the room. We'll put them at their correct station and then we'll tell them to take a look at the Scantron answer uh, sheet. We'll tell them to check their school name in the area labeled name, check your team number in the area labeled student zip grade ID, and then we'll tell them to turn over the back of the sheet to make sure they see the um, tiebreaker question numbers 85, 86, 87, and 88. We'll explain that this is where they're gonna write their tiebreaker answers. And that, and that spelling counts for these four answers. And then we'll tell them to turn around and then we tell them to circle the number they're starting at because we don't want everyone putting starting, putting their answer at number one when they're really at station number 45. So we actually go through the room and we check that to make sure they're starting at the correct number. So again, we tell them you can't sit during the competition you can't move to someone else's space just because you're finished. And then usually uh, what they're do being tested on is what's at the end of the pointer. So the uh, there's an arrow, usually it's either red or yellow. And we say, look at what at the tip of what that arrow is pointing to. In addition, they will have some other questions for like different pathways, the pathway of light. So I may say, after uh, light leaves this structure, what is the next destination? So if I'm pointing to one structure, so if they don't read the question carefully, they may pick that, stru that structure when the question is actually asking them what would be the next structure in the pathway. 
So they have to be careful of those types of questions. Um, Real quick, Felicia, there's a question from Praveen Thomas. Yes. Uh, how many minutes per station? I one minute. Roughly one minute. One minute, four questions. Yes. And that, includes the, and that includes the tiebreakers. So they have one minute to answer all four questions, including the tiebreaker. So whoever is the best speller, they need to know that in advance because they're only going to get that one minute to write all four answers down for the tiebreaker. The tiebreaker is only used if there are ties in the main portion of the exam. So from one to 84, if there are like three teams that score, let's say a perfect score of 84, then we have to go to the tiebreakers. If there are no ties within the group, then we don't use the tiebreaker at all. Any other questions? Any other questions? That so said, I think so. So far, no other questions. If anybody has a question, you can jump in. Okay, great. So we tell them not to mark or write on the question answer sheet, only what they're filling in, their little blanks, no talking of any kind. And we tell them this includes whispering, is allowed during the competition. They're not allowed to pick up or touch anything. And I know it's hard for them because they're just... Uh, this group of students is very young and they love to touch things. They're very tactile. And so we have to constantly remind them you can't touch anything. And so this will be very important uh, this time around. What will probably happen is that we will put the questions, uh, if they are pictures, under a piece of plastic. So they will not be allowed to touch the question at all. And then we'll probably go around. So usually at the end, when one group leaves, we go around and check every station. We put down new Scantron answer sheets. And so this time around, we'll probably wipe everything down as well. They'll always move up in numerical sequence until they reach question number 88. And then the person or team at number 88 goes to number one. And so there's a supervisor always standing at between those two stations telling the person from 88 to go to uh, number one because it's usually by the door. We tell them don't leave any question blank. If you run out of time, make an educated guess, and then to make sure that they fill in their answers. And we actually go around and check to make sure they're filling in the answers properly. Now, uh, I'm gonna share uh, what a study packet will look like for you. So let me, uh, I'm gonna go to another document. So there'll be at least, there's a nervous tissue study packet, there's a brain images study packet, a spinal cord study packet, and then the respiratory system and ear and eye study packet. So there'll be several study packets that you'll have access to. So I'm gonna to go to the nervous tissue study packet and I'll explain to you uh, what you're looking at, okay? So let me make sure I'm sharing the right window. Okay, so do you see, um, can you see this new window here with the images? Can you see the images? Oh, I just switched out again. Nope, you're still on the same Word document. Uh, okay, so let me see, let me switch it out. Oh, I just had it, I'm sorry. Sometimes, let me, uh, nope, that's not it. Okay, so let me just, so in the uh, study packets, what you'll see so I'm back here. So in the study packets, what, what's in the study packets is that some, are di uh, some of the study material is a diagram or are diagrams. And then other ones are pictures of models that we actually have on ground. And then what I've gone through is I've labeled those pictures for you. So you'll be able to see, you'll know firsthand what you're looking at and what you'll be tested on. And so you won't be tested on any uh, structure that is not in the study guide in the rules packet. And so 
we stick to that packet. Uh, so this time around, you'll have pictures. You'll also have some models, but I'll try to stick to the pictures or the pictures of the models, stick to the material you actually have access to. You will not be able to go to the learning center this time around. Okay, so the learning center is offering very limited access, even for, um, for Macomb students right now, the learning center, you have to have an appointment to go in and it's basically used for testing only if students don't have a computer at home. Okay, so um, I'll take any questions and I'll try to figure out how to show you this packet. Go back. That that packet is something that's going to be posted up for everybody. Yeah, to so they'll have access download to download or the yeah. So yes, you'll have access to all the packets. So I'm going to go back to this one. That's the zip grade. So you'll have access to those packets because that's what you'll use to study for the event. I think I just found it. I see. Is there another question in the chat? I see. Uh, no, there's somebody's yeah. just pointing out that uh, uh, they can't not see it. The screen. Uh, so Felicia is working on changing the screen. She has got a couple different cameras. Uh, like she said, if you are not able to switch the screen, this particular packet that she is talking about is going to be available to everybody to download and study. Uh, those, of, those of who are new to A for Anatomy, in past, we had a model that you can go study. Uh, I believe there was one at uh, Macomb Community Library. And yeah, I the think Learning was, Center, yes. Yeah. So you could go there, reserve a time, and you were able to see uh, the specimen there and study off it. Uh, now with the COVID, we are not able to do that. So we'll replace that part. Felicia will replace that part with a handout that you can study off, which may contain some pictures and diagrams and so on and so forth. Can you take control of my uh, screen? I should be able to. Go ahead and take control and then I'll show you how to I'll show you the file because it's all in Science Olympiad. OK, all right. OK, so, yep, I'm going to allow. Go ahead. Um, Can you see my desktop? Not yet. Give me one more second. Maybe. OK, great. Uh, for some reason, I'm not able to see it. How about you unshare and then try to reshare? That should probably help you. Okay. I'm going to stop the control. Okay, so I have control back. In between, if you guys have any question, you can put it in the chat or you can. Yeah. Oh, I have it back. Okay, yeah. great. So let me open it up. So. So now can you see this, the different slides? It's like a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, no, so the screen you shared was the Explorer window. If you do okay. a Alt tab, you should be able to pick the window where it's open. Hold the Alt key down and hit the Tab key, and then you should be able to switch as to which screen you are sharing. Or the other faster way is to stop the sharing and restart the share. And that will let you go to that screen. Okay, so let me stop it. Okay, and then I'm gonna open up a sh another share. Yep. Now, yes? Yes, there we go. Okay, great. Okay, so what you see here is like the nervous tissue study packet. And so what you'll see is that you see some diagrams, such as slides one and two. And then here, Three, four, and six, these are all pictures of different models. And so what I've done is actually labeled the models for you. And so what the student would see on the exam is that they wouldn't see the labeled picture, 
they would just see an arrow pointing to a structure and then they would have to label it. I mean, they would have to identify it. So they'd get, be given a multiple choice uh, question and then they would have to label or identify the structure based on the different options that they're given. And so there are several packets like this. Uh, let me see, let me show you another one. I'll stop this share, open the share tray again. So here's another one. Again, some pictures that are labeled, but then in this one, there are three different models. And so what I've gone through, I labeled the models and these would be the pictures of the models they would see, or they would see the model itself. And then there would be an arrow, a colored arrow pointing to the structure that they have to identify. And so there are like five, to six packets like this. And these would normally, all the questions would come from models, like 99% of the questions on the exam would come from models. And so now, Basically, we have the pictures of the models, and then I've given you those pictures, and I will give you those pictures to study with the students, and then they'll just be uh, be tested mainly on the pictures, and then maybe a few models. It just depends. And all this will be put together with the Word document that Felicia was sharing in a in a in a shared place. So you guys will be able to download all of these, uh, hopefully within a week, Felicia? Yes, the, the documents are ready to go. Okay, so we probably will have this rolling out to your head coaches probably within three days, if not sooner. Yeah, but the biggest change is that you will not be able to use the Learning Center as a place to go and look at the models. That, that option is no longer available uh, this year. Yep. Any other questions? You can speak up or you can type it in chat, whatever is easier. Yes. So you should have been given the, uh, so you should have the rules themselves. So the only document, so this extravaganza document is available in terms of the uh, version that was available for the competition that would have occurred in 2020. And so the updated version of this document has to be uploaded where it tells you the, long, the learning center information is no longer there. So don't call the learning center. Actually, the people who used to work there who helped coordinate the uh, Learning Center for Science Olympiad, both of them retired like this semester. So they're no longer there anyway, they're not there. And so, uh, yeah, so the study packets will be in the Google Drive. And so it has to be my personal Google Drive because of the copyright limitations on some of the models and the pictures. They're from textbooks that I have permission to use. So yes. Any other questions? Yes. Yes, we will be those will be sent to the head coaches through your uh, uh, through the Science Olympia to your head coaches and the head coaches will uh, send you the link out since we only have the head coaches email information. We don't have every coach's email information. Yeah, so there's a question about the functions. So the only functions, I'm gonna open another share for you. Let me get to that document. So the only documents, uh, the functions that you have to know have to deal with the different pathways. So that information, like the different parts of the brain that you have to know, that is the same. So. I didn't put this in this folder. Let me, let me pull it up from my other folder. Um, study guide pathways. Okay, so let me share this with you. Now, this is available already online. Okay, so here for the nervous system, they have to know the path of 
the um, nervous signal, the reflex arc. They have to know the path of sound through the ear, the path of light through the eye, and then only these parts of the brain. So they do have to know this information. And so this document is actually um, posted on the AS4 Anatomy uh, website. 